First off, I can't believe it's nearly been a year since I first started this Liminal Spaces series. These videos have changed my life in so many ways, and I just want to thank you all for liking this sort of content. If you want me to keep on making these Liminal Spaces videos, then let's get this video to 20,000 likes, or I'll just do other stuff. But with all of that being said, I hope you enjoy, and don't visit any of these places if they're on private property or something. I don't want to be responsible for anybody doing stupid stuff. The abandoned Toys R Us image is a true liminal space for a variety of reasons. First off, we often associate liminal spaces with the places we can remember from our childhoods, and Toys R Us was a staple for many kids growing up, until their inevitable bankruptcy in 2018. Now, it's been a while since I've stated the definition of what a liminal space even is, and it's essentially a place in time that is no more. So, when we look back at a picture like this, it really shows how Toys R Us was just a moment in time that no longer exists, both physically and in the memories of many people. Not to mention that this also gives off the other characteristics of liminal space photography, like the creepy lighting and overall ominous feeling. What's inside there? To finally get to the point you're probably waiting on, I found this image on an old blogging site called skycity2.blogspot.com. The website ran from 2005 to 2019, and mainly covered dying malls and retail chains. On August 16th, 2009, the blog would cover a mall in Huntsville, Alabama. The post would start off by saying, As one of the lost malls of Huntsville, this mall was a living time capsule. It is the creepiest mall I have ever seen, and it was in a very decrepit state when these photos were taken. The person who would take these photos that are now on screen were taken by Evans Criswell on January 12, 1998. Evans would later upload his photos of the now demolished mall to deadmalls.com, and the site we're looking at now would then pick up his pictures and make the article we're looking at now. Moving along, there's actually many liminal feeling pictures from Evans' day at the mall, and as we can see here is the Toys R Us picture. It was once located at the mall in Huntsville, Alabama, and is now just a building that lives on through pictures and memories. You can commonly find this dark and ominous picture of an empty beach at night in many liminal space compilations. Just by looking up this image with the search image with Google feature, I saw this right here, some sort of hotel listing on TripAdvisor. After quickly scanning through the pictures of the Hotel Plaza Esplanade in Italy, I can confirm that this is the same place as the Liminal Space Beach. There's many pictures of the beach at night, and it's nearly identical to the classic photo. If you want to visit this place for yourself, then prepare a trip to the Hotel Plaza Esplanade in Lido di Gesolo, Italy. If you've ever watched the critically acclaimed zombie movie, 28 Days Later, then you may remember this scene right here. This shot in particular has been screenshotted and shared all over online, as many people feel pretty weird from looking at it. This reddit post by DVD5671 may have been the first time someone shared the picture online, and the comments convey a lot of the same thoughts I have. The grass. It's always the grass. I think it's the grass, but also the angle of the road and the fact that you can only see the top of the wind turbines in front of the gray sky without a point of reference. I think it's because the grass is so well kept and perfect, but everything else is so empty. It's like, who is maintaining the grass? I thought I'd also add this little interaction, as I thought it was interesting. It looks like a 90 CG render. That was actually the director's intention. They've purposely recorded the majority of the movie with an older semi-pro VHS camera and applied uncanny CGI effects to it to enhance the atmosphere. The unusual camera style, effects, and quite often the music of the movie make up a textbook example of liminal space, and I friggin' love that. On the topic of liminal spaces that involve wind turbines, here's a personal picture that I like for whatever reason. This one was pretty quick to find, as I came across this wind turbine article that has many different pictures of the liminal space, and at the very top, you can see that this wind turbine is in Cologne, Switzerland. Be sure to subscribe to Jaden Salads and follow him on Instagram. You can also get some fire merch by going to jadensalads.com to buy t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Join the Discord in the description for potential giveaways, and make sure to leave a like on the video. 
You may recognize this place from a variety of different images, and that's because this is one of the more known doomsday bunkers in the United States. This 26 foot deep fallout shelter vacation getaway was built in Las Vegas during the 1970s by an American businessman called Gerard Henderson. It was built for comfort, fitted with swimming pools, a sauna, a garden with fountains and waterfalls, a mini golf course, and even a barbecue hidden inside an artificial rock. Instead of running for cover when the bomb hit, Henderson figured it would be easier and safer to live there at all times. In this video by Survive Doomsday, he gets to take a tour in the very large bunker, and as you can already imagine, there's a very strange and artificial feeling in every room. So here we have the backyard of the ranch style home. There's a nice fountain. The mural again shows upstate New York. That's the guest house here, the little 530 square foot guest house. As far as I know, you could actually buy this bunker for a small loan of $6 million, or at least that's what this article from last year says. It's also worth mentioning that this liminal space right here was taken inside of the kitchen of this doomsday bunker, so you got two in one. It's safe to say that everything you're looking at is no longer here, as it would all be taken away as a result of the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks. I have a couple of videos already made on some stuff related to 9-11. This one in particular is pretty interesting, so go check it out after this if you want. You just saw Toy Story 3 at the movie theaters, late at night at around 11.30. You, your parents, and your siblings begin walking out of the theater to realize that you're the only ones left. You continue walking to the car, you all go home, you jump right in bed, and you fall asleep. This was a comment left under this post of a pretty dead lobby area in an unknown building. Someone on the thread would ask this. Any interesting stories regarding this place? To which OP would say, Not super interesting to be fair. It used to be this enormous cinema outside of the city with eight huge screening rooms and thousands of visitors. But now it's completely empty and dead, but still playing films for some reason. I used to go there when I was a kid and my friend took this picture a few weeks ago. You can also find that this movie theater is located in Poznan, Poland, and is called Cinema City, but was formerly known as Kanopolis. On December 28, 2011, this picture would be uploaded to foursquare.com, a website that would provide personalized recommendations of places to go near a user's location. When I first came across this liminal space, it immediately reminded me of that mall used in the movie Possibly in Michigan. Have we met before? But upon further research, the mall seen in Possibly in Michigan was actually shot at the Beechwood Place in Beechwood, Ohio, and for the image I'm talking about, it's called the Century 3 Mall, located in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. This mall is actually pretty infamous, being featured in not only a Dan Bell video, but also a Bright Sun Films video. The Century 3 Mall opened on October 24, 1979, and became the third largest mall in the United States at the time. It performed well, having hundreds of thousands of shoppers every year, until other nearby malls and shopping places started to outperform it. The mall in 2024 is currently waiting to be demolished, and will forever be a memory to those who once shopped there. Many of the pictures on the mall's Foursquare page are just as liminal as the one I've been talking about, and it's honestly pretty sad to see it fade away. Sad to see the demise of a once beautiful mall, perfect place to shop. If you have a death wish, it's sadly falling apart. I only go here for a few stores. Make sure you are carrying a weapon of some sort before coming here. Wiz Khalifa's music video, Mesmerized, was filmed inside the mall and outside of the entrance of Dick's Sporting Goods. Hello everybody, my name is Brugley or Jared, and I make videos here on YouTube about liminal spaces. But much broader than that, I talk about the backrooms, Trevor Henderson creatures, SCP stuff, lucid dreaming things, and Silent Hill entities. But shameless plugging aside, let's get into the video y'all clicked on. The Abandoned Arcade, or Backrooms Level 94's Castle Interior. 
This image has been a really popular liminal space for quite a long time, and it's often associated with the interior of this castle in level 94 of the back rooms. From what I can tell, the room is a very vibrant and childlike place, and it almost has the sense of something that used to be an arcade, or is trying to be an arcade. After searching around to see when the image was first posted online, I came across a traveling blog from February of 2013. The blogging entry reads like this. Today we wandered around the city for a bit, along with visiting some famous places in Taipei. It was a fairly exhausting day filled with much walking and photo taking. My favorites are included down below. As we can see here, the first picture listed is of the iconic liminal space and backrooms photo. When clicking on the image, you can also read some text that says, An abandoned arcade we stumbled across, it's pretty eerie. While the poster themselves didn't leave the actual location of the arcade, we do know that it was once somewhere in Taipei which is in Taiwan. Unfortunately, I have a pretty good feeling that this liminal space no longer exists since it's been more than a decade and it was already abandoned a decade ago. That means it's definitely demolished or changed completely now. This is a classic one though. It gives you all those feelings of liminality. Now, if you watch the video that Jaden made a few weeks ago called The Guide to a Liminal Space Road Trip, then you'd be well aware of where this image was once located. But to those who didn't click on the video or are fake, this picture of an oddly lit room with painted eyeballs on the floor, ceiling, and walls was once a part of an art exhibit called the Hidden Planet Mystery Tour. This abstract art experience if you could even call it that, was located along a beach in Hong Kong, as listed here on the Hidden Planet store page. Even though we know where the exhibit exists, there's still a big problem at hand. When looking at the reviews on the Hidden Planet Mystery Tours website, they either date back to 2022 or 2021, which raises the question, is it still around? The answer to this was unknown until someone, that's presumably from Hong Kong, had left a comment on that liminal space road trip video that Jaden made a few weeks ago. The comment reads like this. Hey there, I did not expect to see an entry from Hong Kong. I didn't even know that the place I live in now has such liminal spaces. However, I am sad to announce that currently the exhibit is not available and I don't see it coming back any sooner. So thanks to the commenter Bruce Lamb 115 we can hopefully trust his word and say goodbye to yet another liminal space that's no longer around. Now going back again to another memorable liminal space from level 94 of the back rooms are the houses. And I'm gonna tell you about the real life neighborhood that these houses are loosely based off of. A Reddit user called Lucky Boy Sniper made this post about eight months ago and it sadly got six upvotes for something that's rather incredible, you'd figure it would have more, but it didn't. I'm sorry, Lucky Boy Sniper, I would help you out if I knew how. The post says, I was on a bus and I saw some houses that looked suspiciously similar to the level 94 houses. I managed to quickly take some pictures of these houses before it was too late. Lucky Boy Sniper would add many pictures to his claim, and they seem pretty accurate to the ones shown in Gabriel Traverstadt's art. But what really seals the deal is when Lucky left a link to the houses on a Google Street View, and upon clicking the link that they provided, we can move around and clearly see the truth of what was being told. Now, I've even found certain angles of these houses that closely resemble the ones in the level 94 pictures. Now, if you wanted to move into this real life backrooms neighborhood, they're located at the Villages neighborhood in Ankeny, Iowa. I don't know why you'd want to move to Iowa, if I'm being honest, but they're there. So I guess this type of housing is fairly common in Iowa, as I also found at this listing just 20 minutes away, this time in a town called Altoona, and it looks pretty much the exact same. Who would have thought that one of the most ubiquitous backrooms pictures came from Iowa? So for the last entry that I'll be covering, it's this one right here. The term dreamlike can be applied to many liminal spaces for obviously seeming like a place that you come across in a lucid dream or a fever dream or something. But this picture in particular truly fits that saying. It sticks to that saying exactly. 
The materials and surfaces in this image are so shiny and smooth that honestly it kind of seems like bad CGI in a way. But with all that being said, some of you may not even know what it is that you're looking at. And to answer this curiosity that you have, it's a really popular tourist spot known as the Fly Geyser. Now, to those who may also not know what a geyser is, the Google definition is a hot spring in which water intermittently boils and sending a tall column of water and steam into the air. If you've heard of the old faithful geyser, it's like that. It's kind of like nature's blowhole. Anyways, going back to the photo, I'd like to credit Jeremy C. Munns for being the photographer of the picture, as it's not often that we actually know the person behind the camera that took the picture of the liminal space. Props to Jeremy. You can visit this surreal attraction in Washoe County, Nevada, if you want to take in the serene beauty of it. So sadly, my time in this video has come to an end. I'm going to get back to constructing backrooms videos and liminal space videos and dissociating into a world that's not even real. Have a great day, everybody. Can this be considered an outside liminal space? A Redditor would respond to that by saying, This works really well because there's no visual indication in this picture that this is either an innocent segment of some suburban neighborhood or a practically infinite suburban hell world where no matter how long you follow the endlessly snaking roads, there are just more cookie cutter homes and their barren lawns with small artificially placed trees. The sun never sets. In fact, there is no sun. Just a blue sky extending forever. And the day never ends. I really like this picture, and no matter how hard I looked through this reddit thread or google image searching, I never got an exact spot for where this was taken. The only clue I had was this right here. This has to be Omaha. Holy schnackos. I don't know how I can tell, but 188th Avenue was a dead giveaway. This is close to 192nd and Harrison, right? OP would respond by saying, Yeah, around that area. I can't exactly remember where, but it's one of the newly developed areas. After gathering whatever information I could, I now know that this neighborhood is located in Omaha, Nebraska. Not just this, but it has to presumably be located on 188th Avenue and around an area with newly developed buildings. I thought this search would end rather quickly, but I ended up spending a lot more time looking around than expected. I first started by looking up 188th Avenue in Omaha, Nebraska, just by going off whatever this Redditor had said and hoping that he's accurate. I was specifically looking out for red tactile paving on the corner of a sidewalk, barred fences with a street light in front of it, and these two little boulders. The more I looked around, it seemed like I could come across the image at any point, but I never did and it started to sink in at how many neighborhoods there are in Omaha, Nebraska. And they all look the same. This picture was hiding in plain sight. I eventually ended up about 15 minutes away from Omaha, Nebraska, in a city called Gretna. While still searching around, I noticed something. Do you recognize the back of this house? It looks pretty similar to the one in the background of the image we're looking for. There's three windows, both have a chimney in the same spot, and both are dark blue. It was only a matter of time until I came across the spot, but this house in particular was the saving grace. I then went to satellite view on Google Maps, angled myself to where the house would appear in the way it does in this picture, and I found myself in where I want to be. Ladies and gentlemen, we freaking got him. Roll the clip. We got him. If you, for some reason, want to see this for yourself, the location that Google gave me is 11352 South 169th Street in Gretna, Nebraska. The sky is an empty abyss, and the street light stands lonesome, surrounded by nothing. A place that we often associate with crowds of people is suddenly vacant, Surrounded by nobody. This picture was first uploaded to Reddit over two years ago, with the caption above it saying, A friend just sent me this photo from Delaware, and it looks like it would fit here. By simply looking up water parks in Delaware, because there's no way Delaware has more than five water parks due to its small size, the second result showed me the exact same water slide seen in the Reddit image. If you want to go slide on these when they're not so liminal, then buy a ticket at the Thunder Lagoon Water Park in Ocean City, Delaware. I'm pretty positive that this empty shopping center was used in a lot of these old liminal space compilation videos, and I'm kinda surprised it took me this long to cover this one. 
I never managed to find where this image in particular came from, but I did find the location from a similar photo, on a website for Southern Urban Exploration. On Wednesday, June 12, 2013, a page would be made for the Northgate Mall in Lafayette, Louisiana. Hot sauce for everybody. Everybody gets a bottle. The article showcases many different parts of the mall that are devoid of life, and at the bottom of the page, we can see this. As a bonus, here is the view from the entrance doors to the former Albertsons that closed in early 2012. While it's not the same picture as the one I'm talking about, it has the same tiled flooring and is obviously a match. I doubt this abandoned Albertsons is still accessible or looks anything like this, but the mall that it was attached to is still around and still pretty dead. Someone on Reddit had this to say about the mall from just three months ago. I ended up here by accident one time. The only place that was open was a cheap streetwear store in an H&R block tucked away at the very far end of the wings. The food court had 90s-esque paintings on the window and looked like it hadn't been open for over 10 years. Zachary Gadrio Wa is a French artist best known for his art series called Facades. Zachary would create many different variants of this type of photography, and this one would manage to become a pretty popular liminal space. At first, I was almost positive that Zach created a big neighborhood full of building fronts, but that wouldn't be the case, as he convincingly made these art pieces by editing and messing with real pictures. I enjoy browsing through the city, wandering through the streets, watching and imagining what lies behind the walls. A glue behind a half open shutter, noise through a window, Lothar and tears anonymous like a number on a door. Everything may seem foreign, instilling fear a curiosity. This quote that was taken and translated from Zachary can also be applied to a lot of liminal spaces. I often ask myself when analyzing different pictures, what's behind there? Who might be here? Who was here? And at the end of the day, these questions usually remain unanswered, and we can only see what's presented to us from what is being shown. Sometimes, I flat out can't find the location or origin of a liminal space, or even cursed image for that matter. For example, I felt like I was really close to finding this house on whatever housing site it must have been listed on. I got results, such as this one and this one, but I ultimately never found where this picture came from. This has been the case for about, I'd say, 50% of the liminal spaces that I try and talk about. But thankfully to the Liminal Spaces channel and my Discord server, there's probably over a hundred different locations found for popular and not so popular liminal pictures. I'm just going to list off a lot of the liminal spaces that have been found on there, so thank you to the users I'm about to mention. You can also contribute to this by joining the Discord in the description, if you want. The user Valentine managed to find a plethora of different pictures, so here we go. 1301 East Clay Street in Stockton, California. 714 Stockton Circle in Ridley Park, Pennsylvania. This was taken at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. The Liberal Arts and Science Academy in Austin, Texas. Trivent, Triv Trivandrum International Airport, an edited picture of the Manor Valley Golf Course in Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania, 13th Emerald Street in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Lollipop Park in Hamilton Township, New Jersey. Another active member in the Liminal Spaces channels is Michigan Cube, so here are the ones that they found. Martin Hall at Eastern Kentucky University at 209 Park Drive, Richmond, Kentucky. The Hyatt Regency Hotel in Houston, Texas. And the Aqua Park Babylon in Liberec, Czechia. I'm pretty sure I butchered that one, I apologize. And finally, here's the little slideshow for a bunch of other notable finds. Thank you guys. First and foremost, look at this amazing fan art. If you want to submit some, just join the Discord in the description or hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Secondly, we should all give Brugley a huge thank you for being a big part of the video. I'll leave his channel on the screen and in the description. He makes videos over liminal spaces, backrooms, and all of that sort of stuff. Along with that, huge props to the longtime channel friend Must Lord for providing a majority of the background music you can hear in this video. I'll leave the links to the tracks I used along with their bandcamp if you're interested. Go support. Finally, here's a shout out to everybody on the Patreon. Bassmick, Bella M, Damn Sandy, 3L, MMO, 
Eyeball Dude, Jera, Sinful, Josh S, Josh Wynn, Landon Rodriguez, Leon S, Lexi Bunny, Lottie Dottie, Master Shake, Miko, Misazaki, Mustlord, Patlov, Cher, and The Good Bunch. We got a couple new members on the Patreon, so thank you guys so freaking much. Took a nap right on my glasses.